Welcome to another week of the Coaches Show here in the Global State University Athletic Department. We are here in the Waco Center, and our first uh, guest today will be head men's and women's track and cross-country coach Dan Myers. Dan, thanks for joining us on this Monday morning. Thanks for having me, Coach. Tell you what, uh, big weekend, uh, 6K for the women, 8K for the men up at Lock Haven. And uh, I tell you, when when you go to these big meets, you have 40-plus teams up there, and um, the – a lot of times, you know, the, the places go out the window. It's looking for times, how you stack up in relation to other teams in the league and region. Uh, what are some of your takeaways from that trip up there? Well, um, that meet has been going on. This was the 22nd year of that Invitational, um, and it was the biggest one that they've ever had. Coach Russell does a phenomenal job, um, you know, with the maintenance of that course. Like, I, I like joke with the team. It's like field of dreams for cross country. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You, you know, you don't get, like – much closer to that and uh, just a beautiful venue. And I mean, the amount of volunteers that like go into it are crazy. I mean, they, we had to have an alternate bus route for the charter and they had volunteers two miles out from the course to make sure we got, you know, to the course. So it's just like the little things they take care of there is huge. And with the lead vehicles and the trail vehicles and just all the volunteers with parking and everything, they make it so seamless for 45 teams. So um, but, you know, between the men's uh, white race and um, the uh, crimson race that the women ran in, we, we had some great performances. And, um, you know, we're a little thin on the guys' side, but I think that uh, they can't – they we can't understate, you know, how well the guys that took the line ran. So um, just overall was a really good weekend, and, and we – they were surprised at how fast that course went. Yeah, I think uh, – and I know you dealt with that later in the week with the, the shuffle and how the women ended up in the Crimson race. But but it panned out all right the way it landed. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it was exactly what I wanted um, in terms of um, – which was the original thought was just to have Natalie in the Crimson race. Um, and we had to kind of do a little shuffling, um, you know, with some of the dual sport athletes on our, on our cross-country roster. So um, we ended up going the full um, – you know, the race uh, – all the women were in the Crimson race. And – um, you know, Natalie Barr would have would have fought for the victory in the white race. Yeah. And but what I wanted to see out of her was kind of in that 25 to 50 range. And, and she ended up in 48th position. But she put her nose in it and, um, you know, absolutely set a brand new standard for, you know, the 6K um, times here at Glenville. And, um, you know, beating the old record by over two and a half minutes and um, 22, 26 went through the 5K at 1837. And, um, you know, what tells me the most about her is her feelings after the race, you know, not being satisfied. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there were some things that we had to talk about in the grand scheme of things. You make her feel a little bit better about the performance, but once she heard what she went through at 5K, I don't think she could have been disappointed. And she was the fifth freshman wow. in the field and um, near top 10 of all the conference runners. And um, when I picked them all out, she was about the 25th runner from the region. Um, which was huge. And I mean, you got to think like Walsh and Finley and some of the schools that were there outside yeah. of the region are just top programs and, um, you know, Slippery Rock and Charleston and D&E and just those schools that were mixing it up. It was it was awesome to see her out there running, you know, like a veteran, but, you know, not being satisfied at the end as well. And I think that, you know, if she could look back a year in time, you know, she never had broken 20 this time last year. And for her to go through a 6K at 1837, she can't be upset about that. So. Wow. And uh, I know we had talked earlier in the week about that, that conversion of 5K to 6K, and I think it was uh, like 2248 or something like that. Yeah. We looked it up. And, and so she went through the 5K 11 seconds faster than what she ran last week, and then off that conversion ended up 22 seconds faster than what the conversion is. So she must have really turned up the intensity even, you know, the last half mile. Yeah, absolutely. And I would actually say that, you know, she ran most of the, you know, she ran, I think one thing you have to take into consideration too, running the whole thing at six flat pace, like take the time out of it. Like you would have been thrilled like a year ago to run six flat pace for 6k. And, um, you know, honestly with where she was at 5k, the last K wasn't bad. I just don't think that with that long finish there, she kind of knew mentally when to take off. And I think she just kind of waited a little bit, but I mean, she, next time we are, we're on that course for the regional, you know, she'll, she'll know. And I mean, I, I would have said she executed the race perfectly. So yeah. she put her nose in it. She went out in the first mile at 548. And I mean, you can't ask for much more than putting your nose in it like that. So, um, but yeah, she, she ran really well, you know, Sam Dawson, um, you know, so proud of where she's been over the last three years for her to now be, 
you know, second all time over six K distance. Yeah. I mean, she's got to be super proud of that. And, you know, I know that in the grand scheme of things, she felt like she's like, man, I was so far back there in that race, but a standard is a standard. And, and she's trusted the process since day one. And she's ran through a lot of tired legs. And, you know, I, I told her like when we were on the bus ride back that the biggest thing that she persevered through was that when we talked about, you know, how her legs felt or like, you know, those Sunday runs that she didn't want to get in, I didn't always give her the answer that she wanted, but she's glad that she did it anyway, you know, and yeah. I think that says a lot over three years, especially from where she started at. And, um, you know, she went through the 5K, like basically a 21 flat. So she was yeah. near a 5K PR as well. So Savannah Cunningham ran great. Uh, Summer had a PR as well. So, you know, I, I think overall that those girls have, you know, nothing to be disappointed about. And we just got to get a few of our other factors back into it. And I, th I think they can make a splash in the conference. Now, yeah, with Savannah's race, her being able to, to do what she did, I mean, I know, you know, she's she's being a big part of this team doing what they're doing right now. But just uh, – eyes forward I mean does that make you think about how much more flexibility you may have with her on the track yeah absolutely and uh, you know we've already kind of talked about just because like it's kind of a goal between that group because they, they've kind of meshed really well like you know Natalie and Sam and Savannah have talked a lot about like the women's DMR indoors and like how we just want to kind of build you know that that kind of shows a bunch of different elements of your your mid-distance or distance program and they really want to grow that and um, and I think they have a good chance to, you know, make a, a new standard in that once we get to indoor. But, um, yeah, Savannah went through at a 5K PR and, and finished with a huge 6K PR. Um, and her goal, I told her at the beginning of the race, is, you know, uh, try to stay as close to Sam as possible for as long as possible. And, you know, her thing was she's like, Sam's kind of short, so I kind of lost her, you know, <laughs> midway through. But she said, I felt like I was in distance. Like, yeah. I felt like I was close. And and she was. I mean, yeah. she was she was – 30 seconds off at the most during the whole race. So yeah. um, that was really nice to see. Um, but, yeah, those, those girls ran ran really hard. Well, the on the men's side, I know, uh, again, uh, you were hitting some times on a flat course there. Uh, Isaac Slater had, a, what, about a minute and a half faster than he had done the previous week here down at Marshall? Yep, he'd never been under 30 before in his career here. And, and to be able to you know, break into the 28s and, um, you know, he – is another one that just from day one, like just has persevered through a lot, like has had two years of bad races and it's easy to kind of put in the town, give up at it, but he stayed at, it. he hasn't missed a run all year. And, um, I'm really proud of where he's, where he's at right now. And he said, he's like the best I've felt since high school. And, and I'm, and I'm really happy to hear that, that type of confidence that he has right now. Um, and then, you know, BJ ran tough. It wasn't what he wanted, but at the end of the day, you know, he fought hard and the other guys, I mean, we're thin right now, but I will say that I can't be disappointed considering that our what ended up being our third, our five, and our six runner of the day all went through five k of the eight k at a PR. You know, wow. and and you know it's yeah. just like when you run to that type of standard, you know, you, you no matter if we're thin or not, you can't be upset with that type of heart and effort. I mean. <laughs> Cause you're putting yourself in that position knowing you still got to run three K left. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think in the grand scheme of things, they might've felt like they were out of touch from where the top leaders were, even in the men's white race. But I think once they hear those times, it puts into perspective that like all the miles are worth it. Yeah. So now, uh, you know, diving in, uh, as, as we, we about ready to get out of September, just, just looking ahead from a training standpoint, where's, uh, you know, this transition here from, uh, getting off the, the flat courses, getting what you got out of them mentally and then you know, moving on for what uh, preparation down the road. So this is arguably probably the most important training week that we've had so far. Um, we'll be at the golf course tomorrow, kind of hitting the rolling hills. Um, and But as we kind of transition into two weeks from now, the miles will start to go down a little bit with the quality day still having the high intensity, but we'll be dropping five to 10 miles a week. And, and as we kind of look towards peaking towards conference, but – um, I'm excited for what's to come and, and the, the Carnegie meet coming up in October. It's one of my favorite meets since I've been here and I'm excited to, to go back there. And I think that's, it's not necessarily like a PR course, but it's a course that if you run near your PR or in range of it, you're going to feel really good about it. So I wouldn't say any big Hills there. I would say just an incline you run out in the back. And, um, I think it's a unique opportunity for us to, um, really can kind of see what we can do on a, a little bit more difficult course, yeah. but I think that we're going to thrive on that and I, I'm excited for it. 
Yeah, well, Coach, another uh, tremendous job up here. Really appreciate you taking the time in here to join us this morning. And, again, some more records on the board. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, a big shout-out there to the whole team, but definitely uh, Natalie and uh, Sam for what they accomplished there. So, Yep. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll see you next week on the Coach's Show again with Coach Dan. Welcome back here to the Global State University Athletic Department. We're in going into our next session here of the Coach's Show, and we have head women's golf coach Mike McGarry. Coach, thanks for joining us here this morning. Jesse, thank you. Uh, not not the week you wanted this weekend. That was after a really strong weekend last weekend. Uh, and, and and you said, you know, in front of her, you know, there's going to be ups and downs uh, through the course of a year, and golf's an unforgiving game. And this was one of those weekends that it, it got sideways at a few points. Just some takeaways uh, from your time up at Ashland. It wasn't pretty. It really wasn't pretty. I have stats right here, and, you know, I preach to the girls. I preach to everybody. It's a 135-yard game and in, in the women's golf, and here we are at plus, plus 21. That, that was not me falling down, was it, when I read this? <laughs> that was one of Draven's uh, sound effects there from your uh, conversation. And it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Plus 21 on par threes. The easiest hole in the golf course. Two easiest holes in the golf course was eight and 15 were plus six and plus 10. Plus 10 and a par five, there's no water. I mean, that's just, you can't have that and expect to be a conference champion. You can't do that. Uh, so, you know, here we are now a week away, you know, from uh, being up at, uh, up at Avalon. I know you'll be up, I know you're going up for some practice round, you know, practice round going up over the weekend. But uh, what are the strategies to, to mentally – uh, you know, pull it back in between the beacons uh, to prepare them for a championship tournament? Well, it, it's golf is fundamentals. It's really back to basics. I mean, we're going to – today I called practice at noon. We're going to spend two hours, and all we're going to do for two hours is work on 100-yard, 125-yard shots into the pitching green next to eight, next to eight T. Then I'm going to take the girls out to hole two, and we're going to bang drivers down hole two. And if you can drive the ball on hole two at Glenville and you can hit the green consistently from a buck 25 – I stretched out to 135 because it's really un, it's, it's unachievable, um, but it's a lofty goal. But if if we can just get get some confidence, we have no confidence whatsoever. And golf is a game of momentum. You make a putt here, to keep, you know, par putt here, keep it going. Make a couple birdies, and there a couple under par. We've made nothing. I mean, we've putted poorly all year. We're leaving so many four footer and five, five footer comeback putts from tw 25 feet and 20 feet. It's just we're sloppy. That's it's, to summarize it. We're just sloppy. And uh... You know, we're not going to be talking again before, you know, I'll, I'll be up at Avalon. Our gang's going to be up at Avalon up there to, for the tournament again. And, you know, for that course, which, you know, the Nationals were held there, it, you know, a little more length, uh, you know, depending on the weather, but the greens can be unforgiving. Uh, you know, real, really tough challenge and, and, and some tough teams as well. Uh, just your approach, you know, for that course and, uh, you know, uh, you know, some of the top teams in our league. So the golf course we just played up in Ashton, Ohio, is a lot like Avalon in Warren, Ohio. Here's the name of the game. You are not getting it out in front of that golf course. If you get out, like, for holes one through five, you can get it a couple under, even through six. But when you, the minute you step out on 8T, from 8 through probably 18, through 18, you got to hold on for dear life. I mean, it, it'll kick you right in the rear, and I mean, it is it, it'll it'll punish you quickly, and it'll be very harsh. So you got to get out early, protect the lead, and just keep the ball, as you like to say, keep it between the beacons, but fairways and greens, and you and you just can't three putt. That's really the summary of the, of the whole whole tournament there. Uh, okay, here I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. The the mental question here on this course was last year exactly what you said. You were able to get a bit of a lead against a strong Charleston team, and you were able to match each one of their chess moves. We did. They would go here, go there, and you managed that last round, especially the back nine, to protect the win. year before when Wheeling got up on you. Please don't bring that back up. Yeah, well, I mean, that, but, that's, but like I day. said, it was, you said it was exact opposite. Yeah. It was a mental thing. If they would have had the same approach right. they had last year, they could have made a comeback. And we Just uh, being able to you know approach the mental side there going into it. The whole, again, the whole – Thing with Avalon you take what the golf course asks you to do 
for instance, Hole 14 is our nemesis. You know, yep. we made a 14. We tied them in, on 14T, and one of our girls hit in the, hit in the uh, bunker right, hit in the water, and I think she put a 14 on the card or a 12 or something like that. But anyways, if you, if you just stay away from the, the hazards at Avalon, you have a fighting chance. The minute you test the golf course, you're done. I mean, Hole 3 is a par 5. You now, everybody here is par 5. You just hit it out there. You have two bunkers that kind of come in on the left side of the fairway. You put the ball in the bunker, you're looking at six and seven. You put the ball short of the bunker to the right, even a, even a five iron, seven iron down the fairway, you got a nine or wedge in the green, you're putting for birdie. That's the way to play the, the holes. But the minute you test that golf course, you're done. You're done. Well, you mentioned, you know, how y'all were plus, how, plus, you, know, you know, how many strokes uh, you gave away on, on some, what should have been the easier courses, either, either uh, holes on the course. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you think college age golfers they see that par five and automatically think birdie opportunity and they and they just maybe get away from the fundamentals a little bit. Funny you say that because when I was these kids, their ages I was as I was more aggressive. I'm not gonna lie, it yeah. <laughs> wasn't a pin I didn't like. But as you get older, you're like, I, I don't want to be hitting out of bunkers. I don't want to be hitting out of the pond. Just take the ball in the middle of the green, 15 footer after 15 footer. Something's got to fall by mistake, even if you misread it. Yeah. If the right pace, it's going in. So, you you just got you have to teach patience. You have to teach, and they have to develop and understand the fat side of the green. And it's hard for a lot of these kids. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to remember, Bicker's a basketball player. Hendershot's a volleyball player. Spike in the ball. You know, Kendall Wall is just, she's a silent assassin. You put darts in her hand and look out. And you know, Mackenzie Zeppel was a as a hockey player. I mean, these kids have. I hate to use the word aggression, but they're aggressive sports by nature. Yeah. And they take that to the golf course. Well, with, with that being said, uh, I mean, you mentioned, you know, some of the young ladies' names there. Uh, is your lineup pretty set for what you're going with at the championships? It, it, uh-huh. So, so same yeah. five? Absolutely. The, yeah. the kids comply. I said it to you in the summer. I'll say it again. It's the most talent Glenville State women's golf will ever see. It, the talent is off the charts. It's how do you manage it. I feel like I'm, I've got secretariat, and I'm trying to keep secretary from running as fast as they yeah. want to go. It's just you got to <laughs> – you got to harness this talent and just keep it under control. Well, I'll tell you, like I said, we'll we'll be gone next week. You know when, uh, but but we'll be up there to see you the following day. But uh, just we really really wish you and uh, you. Coach Lily and uh, the guys luck as well, and uh, that we we have a, a really nice showing for Glenville Golf at the Mountain East Championships next week. Yeah, it would be sweet, wouldn't it? Men's and women bring it home. That'd be something special. Well. It, Absolutely, I, I know I'm putting the I know I'm putting the yeah. out in front of the horse, but it's that's the goal. Well, we're both uh, you know both both groups are very very competitive, and uh, I just want to see you all play well, and and hopefully some good things will fall. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you for joining us today, Jesse. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Welcome back to the Glenville State University Athletic Department, and our next guest here on the Coach's Show for this segment is head women's soccer coach. J.R. Dotson. Coach, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks you, Coach Kyle. Always, always good to be here. Now you got a lot, a lot of sickness on the team. You're coming in here masked up, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm going to have a little uh, <laughs> PPSD <laughs> from, uh, exactly. from the COVID days. Uh, but, you uh, you know, I know yesterday was tough, and we'll get to that about the trip down to Concord, but I want to circle back from the last time we talked. Uh, a very uh, historic win over, uh, you know, an historic program over Wesleyan and to beat them 1-0 and to be the first Southern Division victory in program history. Uh, if you can give us a little revisit back to Wednesday night. It was exciting. Uh, our girls played really well. Uh, I think from the very get-go, they they knew they were going to win and they worked to win. I thought we moved the ball really well. I don't I don't think other than the, the free kick, I don't think we felt threatened at all. Uh, so it was it was a fun game. I think we could easily put a couple more on the board, and we need to. Uh, that's one of the things we're going to be working on this week is we we need to get some more finishes in in there. One of the great things about that game as well was uh, Coach Myers had the track team there. I thought that yeah. brought a lot of energy. It really had Hannah Hill going like yeah. crazy. So it was uh, so every time her Grayland touched the ball, they were <laughs> yeah, they and, were yelling. And that was fun. That was yeah. a lot of fun. I think it helped bring a lot of energy and. Uh, we'll try to work on some things and maybe maybe help that in the in the future. The, uh, I mean, you got you got the goal. Uh, I mean, you had a few opportunities and and then had Smets on the the rebound. It looked like it was going to be saved and it got loose and she she stayed with it. I mean, it was a certainly a persistence goal. 
Oh, it was a beautiful goal. It was it was a Premier League kind of goal. She, I mean, not very many forwards in our league have the uh, uh, the composure to chip it over the goalie when it's that close. Uh, uh, she still thinks it wasn't as good because the keeper got a hand on it, but I thought it was a fantastic goal. Yeah, she chipped it over and then just followed through and, and walked it in. And, uh, well, they had an opportunity off that rebound there, had the big save, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, towards the end of the half, uh, Abigail up. Abigail's been playing fantastic. Yeah, it was tremendous. And and then, you know, we had a couple opportunities where we could have got an insurance win. And, yeah. and, and uh, but, but the point, I think we, you know, outshot them, uh, had the possession. It really seemed like the last 20 minutes, every time they made a push, it, it was not with the same, you know, type of energy that they brought at us the first half. Like y'all really wore them down and the defense came to seal the deal. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think uh, when our defense is playing well, we're, I think we're going to be a tough team to beat. And I think we've seen that, at, 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 not to jump forward too much, at Concord. We didn't play well there. Uh, but when when they're dialed in, when we're focused, I, we have a team that can play with anybody. And and I'm proud of them. Uh, and I think they, they were excited at the win, the win over Wesleyan. And, and they're determined to push to make sure we get in that conference tournament this year. Well, and then, like you mentioned, going down to Concord again, coming off the big win, uh, they 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 got a goal, I think, eight minutes in, and and then they kind of rapid fire there at the end of the half, got three the last 15 minutes. Uh, it seemed like when, when, when they got up two, it really took some wind out of the sails. Well, uh, and and you hate to make excuses for your team. Uh, poor Sofia Hernandez was throwing up before the game. Uh, Sarah is seeing the team doctor today because something she's just not feeling well. Our starting keeper was out with COVID. Um, Irina uh, was – she was a mess. I don't know how she played as much as she did play. So her, our team's just in a in – a, was down six. So it didn't take much to, to lose our spark. Um, we could, I could tell before the game started we didn't have the energy like we did at Wesleyan. We did, we just didn't have the energy, and I think it. Hopefully, we gave them the day off today to try to rest. Uh, got some talent all for them, and hopefully, we'll, hopefully, we'll be we'll be set come come this Wednesday. Yeah, absolutely, and I know uh, Concord. It's a tough ask. They're they're hard to beat down there. It's a tough ask. It really is. But now, you know, it doesn't matter if you lose by one or lose by ten. It, it, it's just one L, and another opportunity awaits you here. You know, this week. You know, with the the games uh, Wednesday uh, with Frostburg and then Sunday up at Salem. What what are you looking for this week? Well, to go to back up just real quick to to finish up on Concord. The the neat thing at Concord is we did get a lot of players in that game. Yeah, we got players in that hadn't seen a a first team game, so I think that's valuable experience and it lets us look at some things and and it gives them that experience of knowing how tough it is from when you go from the second team to the first team. It's it's a world of difference sometimes in, in the speed of play. So I thought that was good for us anyway. So we, we seen some things we liked. So uh, looking forward looking forward to being able to use those players again. Now going into Frostburg, I'm confident. Uh, I'm very confident. And I think mm-hmm. uh, Frostburg is – I do know uh, Coach Parker won't take us lightly. He told us last year he thought we were a talented team and we're a much more talented team than we are this year. So – uh, I don't think they're going to uh, undertake overlook us, but I think we're going to be. I think it's going to be a battle. Yeah. And I think it's going to come down to whoever whoever works the hardest because that's what his teams are built on is work ethic. Yeah. If you watch them, they they don't do anything special. Yeah. They don't they don't possess the ball by passing it around. They just go forward and they don't stop. Yeah. And again, that's you know one of the one sort of one of the premier teams in the north there and uh, and. Uh, yeah, I think they're sitting at seven and zero now. Yep, yep, absolutely, and uh, but it'd be a big, big uh, home assignment there. But then uh, going up to Salem, the replacement for you know AB again. Get a bit, I always want to give a big shout out to Coach Joseph up there, their AD, a Glenville alum, uh, you know, helping out the league and filling in those spots. But yeah, t- about Salem on Sunday. Uh, I think Salem's in a tough spot. Uh, I think. Uh, I think we got to be careful going into that game because they have a lot of international talent, and we can't over we can't overlook them uh, uh, because they've been getting beat down by some teams. But they they did a good job with Fairmont, tied Fairmont, yeah. Fairmont second in the, in the northern the, the the north side. So 
I don't think it's a team that can be overlooked. Uh, we're looking forward. We still hope we hope to do the job at home at Frostburg and then just go finish up at Salem. Yeah. Well, well, Coach, tell you what, next week uh, we get this. It'll be we'll have a couple more matches underneath us. And again, you know, with two two wins and two draws on the board, um, you know, we got a one one win one draw within league play. Definitely getting some points on there towards making that playoff. And uh, you mentioned that as a goal uh, this week could could uh, help weigh in that favor in a positive way. Yeah, for sure, uh, for sure. And we're looking forward to uh, to get back at the D and E, which is a long ways down the road. But our girls are already talking about it. Yeah. Uh, which is fun. You know what I mean? When they're looking forward a little bit like that, that they're excited. Um, our goals line up as far as that, that championship, um, getting in the tournament. And so we're excited. Uh, I, I think uh, bad showing yesterday, but we're going to try to make up for it come Wednesday. Well, Coach, really appreciate you joining us, and we'll be looking forward to Wednesday night on the Mountain East Digital Network uh, with Draven Gibson and uh, Pioneer Media. We'll have that coming for you here Wednesday night at 7. So, Coach, thank you for joining us here tonight. Uh, thank you, and Coach, a big shout-out to you. We always appreciate you doing the, the announcing all those things. I always get a lot of comment from the parents and stuff, so we really appreciate you doing that. Well, I pretty, really enjoy doing it and appreciate it, and well, we love doing it for the kids and the families. Welcome back here to the Global State University Athletic Department. We're back in the Waco Center for another segment of the Coach's Show, and our guest at this point will be head volleyball coach, Kara Perkins. Coach, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hey, you want a big uh, last week. Uh, again, just one, one match, but it opened up league play Friday night at home against Fairmont, a team that you know, had a tremendous year last year. Uh, of course, mm-hmm. uh, I mentioned you know, Coach Travis Hankel, a friend of mine from back, you know, way back there, but he uh, yeah. does a good job with that group. And uh, you, uh, there were certainly segments of that match where y'all – you all battled them hard. At second set, you had that thing up where it was like 24-20. You had to you know, think if we could have pulled that one off and got it to 1-1, mm-hmm. it would have might have been a different look at the whole evening. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, one of the things was uh, definitely struggling with coming right out the bat, um, bringing the energy and just setting the tone right from the start. It's one thing that we sh- have been struggling struggling with in – with us being still early in the season, um, it's not something that I expect to continue to struggle with like throughout the whole season. It's definitely something that can be turned around. And I know you've had uh, some illness and some injury, and I, I know there's certainly some HIPAA things we can't talk about here, but you have several young ladies that are getting a little healthier and, and coming back around. I mean, you look in the, you're getting closer to maybe being able to be full strength in some of the matches this week. Yes, yes, I definitely agree. Um, especially with our middle, you now she was out. Um, she finally got back in in the game on that we had against Fairmont on Friday. So I fully expect that she'll be back mm-hmm. um, this completely this week. So okay, big week ahead. Actually, three matches on the docket this week: two, two, in, two in the conference, and one that will be out out of conference. Uh, but D and E. Mm-hmm. And then going to West tomorrow night, which will be here on Mountain East Digital Network. I want to give a shout there to Draven and the crew there uh, tomorrow night and uh, Friday night, traveling back over to Westland where you were in the tournament, but now you're going back over to play the Bobcats and Nancy Wheeler in a league game. Mm-hmm. And in the non conference game that you were able to land once you got the job there with uh, up in Penn State Fayette, right? Yes. But uh, yep. it was not too far from Morgantown up that way. But the. Uh, yeah, what 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 are you looking for, uh, you know, from those matches this week? You know, um, especially with just focusing on the match um, against D and E tomorrow. Uh, they played Salem on Friday and they won in three sets. Now we went five sets with Salem, so definitely being able to um, go into each game, um, not taking any component lightly. Um, and pretty much, like, we have to play our all because in the end, everyone's really striving for the same thing that we are. So being able to set that tone and know that what we're really working towards um, is really important. Well, the uh, again, we're going, we're going full into league play now pretty much every Tuesday and Friday. Of course, some Saturdays in there with uh, where we that's lined up with the travel partners. Uh, do you feel like the team – 
is now, you know, uh, six weeks in from that first practice, uh, that they're in a rhythm with uh, the practices, the recovery, the matches with, uh, you know, your expectations week to week? Yeah, no, definitely, especially with, like, for the first couple of weeks, we had some big tournaments where we were playing four games. Um, and with the injuries and stuff that we had, um, definitely was taking a toll on a lot of our bodies. Um, so being able to do the recovery now with the sickness that we're getting now, too, um, just being able to know uh, what we can do to help put us in a better situation. So just really taking care of our bodies and our mind um, is the most important thing. But now that those longer weekends are coming to an end, um, it really gives us that open mindset um, for many more possibilities, though. And uh, now, like I said, Fairmont was a very tough opponent. They've been a perennial playoff team up in the north. So, I mean, the – no, you want to get all the wins, and that was home. That 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 would have been a big one if we could have pulled it off. Mm-hmm. It's a very tough team, but you know, but now you know, to D and E, like you said, they just beat Salem. Uh, 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 as far as the mental side about trying to put the Fairmont match in the rearview mirror, and then re you know regenerate that focus in there. Uh, uh, you know, with I know that's, that's your background is, mm-hmm. is you know you know him and you know really working on the mental side. Uh, what are some strategies, or what are you looking at as far as you know having them in that focus? Where are you looking for more energy right off, and uh, you know hopefully establish a lead in that first set tomorrow night? Um, so definitely taking the stuff that um, was happening during that Fairmont game, being able to recognize like the good stuff that we were working on, but also being able to recognize, like, the stuff that um, we still have to put more focus on. Um, It's definitely important to remember all the good things, but being able to learn from the things that maybe um, were putting us at a disadvantage um, to the other teams. Um, Like, I truly believe that we do have all those pieces on our court um, within our team, but right now it's just putting it all together. Well, Coach, um Appreciate you coming in. Next week, you know, again, by the time we talk again, there's going to be three more matches on the board, so there'll be a <laughs> yeah. lot to talk about. Uh, again, we just had one last week, but uh, we really appreciate you being in here and appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Coach. And we'll see you next week with Coach Perkins here on the Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Glenville State University Athletic Department and the Coaches Show. And our final segment here of the day is with head football coach Mike Keller. Thanks for joining us here on this Monday afternoon. Uh, thanks for having me. Enjoying it. i tell you what, uh, you know, we, you knew you were getting into a hornet's nest down there with the homecoming on uh, Saturday night and uh, the the state yellow jackets, uh, the hornets, yellow yeah, jackets. Yeah, Little, yeah they, yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they, they came out uh, and got on a early. You guys, you know, made a, a, a run at them in the second half, but we came up a little short in the end. Yeah, they, uh, they're very good at home. Uh, first of all, they're very good. I mean, we talked about it, uh, you know, as a team all week. Um, they lost uh, to Moorhead State, who which is an FCS team. I think the first game of the year, like 37-35, very easily could have won. Um, one versus, you know, a, a, a good UNC Pembroke team, um, you know, beat Concord, who was picked second in our league, uh, even though I think Concord's having a little bit of a disappointing season. Uh, they still got Mangold and, and all that skill back. Um, so, yeah, we knew we knew all week we were up against it. Uh, coming off a win versus Notre Dame, you know, worried about how we would handle success. Uh, I thought our kids did a great job last week in prep. They did a, They were great at practice. And I thought we competed from beginning to end, you know. So from in every way, I was happy with our team except losing. You know, we we did not we did not handle uh, the adversity of the game the best. You know, um, you know, there's a lot of reasons you could look into this, and I've watched the tape 200 times. You know, there was a lot of good things we did. We had we did we did have a second half comeback. The second quarter, we really competed hard. We blocked a punt. Uh, there were we had we multiple turnovers, you know. But at the end of the day, we lost, and uh, I don't think West Virginia State's necessarily a better team than than we are. I don't think that we were better than they were. I just think they were better that night than we were, and um, you know their their tailback quarterback were phenomenal all night. Uh, they made plays that that we didn't make, and then we got bad down distances. We got a bad game to call to run where where you're down and. You're in drop-back pass after drop-back pass. That puts a lot of pressure on your offensive line, and obviously it puts a lot of pressure on your quarterback. And, 
and uh, we didn't handle it great. Well, a couple of spe- special players there for sure, and uh, but uh, you know you move on, and uh, this week we got the University of Charleston coming to town, very strong squad. Uh, we had a like a classic game down there last year. It uh, went back and forth all the way. And, uh, you know, now they're up here at our place this week. What are we looking for this weekend? Well, Charleston's a good team, very good quarterback, a lot of skill. Um, their defense is different. You know, they jump in and out of odd and even. They're mainly an odd stack team, but they'll jump into a four down uh, front of percentage so that you got to prepare with both. Uh, their secondary is excellent, very physical. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, the team that I always worry about most, and it's cliches for a coach, but it's true, is – you know, I worry about the Glenville State team, and there are some things from that West Virginia State game that we need to correct and fix before we can move on to our next opponent. We got to worry about the opponent between our ears, you know, which is our own minds, and, yeah. um, and kind of get some of that fixed. And we'll address that today. You know, we have a team meeting at four. We've already met with our with individual positions. We'll we'll break this tape down every way you can. You know, every way from Sunday. Probably read too much into it to be quite honest. And then, you know, then basically it's time for Charleston. And tonight's prep with the practice will be all Charleston and we'll move forward from there. And our goal is, you know, every game's one of ten. You know, our goal is to be one and know that week. And last week we lost. And now we got to do everything we can to make this week right. And, you know, our schedule makers did not help us a lot. I mean, the teams that were ranked ahead of us in the preseason rankings, we, you know, Concord I think was picked second. But, you know, the, the state, Charleston, that group – State Charleston, Notre Dame were all picked ahead of us, I believe, and uh, and we play them all right in a row, right at the beginning of our schedule. So um, we're we're running through the big part of it. We knew that, you know, in June, and and now we just, you know, we got to get through it and and do all we can to win this week. Well, that uh, was a uh, you're right. It's going through a gauntlet right here, yeah. and but the the thing is, is that there's so much football left, and you know what. You know, with Frostburg, how good they are. Charleston's had a good start. Fairmont's had a good start. Of course, we're not playing Fairmont. But all these teams still have to play each other, like, right down, right through the rest of this month and through October. So, you know, you come back and get a couple key wins on the hill of of the loss, then you're right back there. You're right back in the thick of it. You know, our goal is to win the league and to uh, be a playoff team. You know, now – that's that has nothing to do with our process, how we go about things. But but big goal, well, that's what it is. Short term goal is the way we try to approach each week. Yeah. You know? So our short term goal is to beat Charles this week, have a good practice. But you're exactly right. If we're looking at the big picture, I mean, not everyone's going to go into Notre Dame and beat. I think we beat them in 19, and they lost this past weekend. That was the first time since they lost to us at home in 19. You know, so it's been a while. They're going to, they're going to win their share of games. Frostburg's a good team. We still control our own destiny with. Charleston's a good team. We still control our own destiny. Fairmont's a good team. We don't play them, but they'll stub their toe in there somewhere. It, it's going. It, the league is so even. No one's going to win this league undefeated. It's just. It's just yeah. as simple as that. And if um, if we take it one game at a time and win our games, all of our goals are still ahead of us. And um, if we don't, we'll still just keep going on our short short term goals. And at the end of the year, we'll look back at our season and see what it looked like as a whole. No. Yeah. And uh, just you, you mentioned about the mental side, preparing each week. Uh, again, this is the this group you know had had the strong start. Uh, really, their first you know really mm-hmm. hard adversity. You know, sure. I think was that sure. when when we were down, and they did respond, even though they didn't make the come. They did bounce back that night. You know, no one wants to hear this, but as a coach, if a team competes hard, and they prepare hard, and they practice, and they care, it's hard not to love that team. You know, and this group does all that. Even our mistakes were not selfish. I want to score points or get stat mistakes. They were, I want to do this because I could help us win this game mistakes. Now, that is that is naive, you know, as a player and as a team, but it, it's, it comes from the right place in the heart. So all that is good. Uh, what you got to hope is you learn. You know, the, Dion said it best. Nothing good comes out of getting your butt kicked. You don't feel good. Don't, ain't nothing good about mm-hmm. it. But – there are things that you learn from games, whether you won the game or lost the game, and we got to look at what cost us to lose this game this week and and focus on that and correct that so that it doesn't cause us to lose next week. That's why you That's why you do that. That's why you acknowledge the mistake. That's why you learn to fix the mistake. That's why you, you do it so you don't, you know, repeat the mistake. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, this uh... – Always exciting when UC comes to town here, and we're certainly expecting a big crowd. And uh, 
a lot of you know good atmosphere out here Saturday. Uh, of course, you know WVU's away. That always helps uh, yeah, sure. our situation. Uh, uh, what uh, what can you say to the to the ancillary side of things? I know that's not your thing, but I no, think no, I think we really we really uh, it's going to be a big deal this weekend to really have the support. Yeah, no, it's critical to us. I mean, uh, I, I thought that you know the night before the West Virginia State game, one of my very good friends in coaching hit me up and said, he said, his exact quote was, was, bro, you're screwed. You, you don't beat State on homecoming. And, um, you know, we're mutual friends with yeah. Pennington and the whole deal. And yeah. after the game, John hit me and he said, he said, coach, I knew you couldn't, I knew we were going to lose on homecoming. I said, oh, I don't want to hear that. You know, and, and he <laughs> says, he goes, he kind of giggles and he's like, no, nah, I'm just telling you, I don't know what it is. But so, so when you, what you're talking to, you know, it's hard for teams to come down here and play us and our fans being here and helping our, our mental state as a, as a football program. Cause the, a lot of the game is played between your ears and being there and having that support in the comfort of home and, and smelling, you know, the, the tailgate and all that thing. I mean, it is critical to our success. And, and, and I, for one, on a personal note, I appreciate it. Yeah. And I love that they're all there and uh, it makes it feel like home because it is home. And, um, and I, I, I want, you know, it's, it's the Hall of Fame, and there's a lot of reasons to be here. It's going to be – you're going to see two very good football teams play. Everyone at West Virginia State saw two good football teams play Saturday. We lost, but we saw two good teams. You're going to see two good football teams in us in the University of Charleston. It's going to be a great day Saturday. And uh, we need all the fans to be here and cheering for the uh, Pioneers. Well, there we go. Draven's on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, I know you're not one to tip your cap on anything, so I'm not going to get too far in the weeds here with uh, some of the – but but basically, uh, as far as being able to have, have a balanced offense and a uh, good defensive effort, is that still, like, big keys? Oh, Looking? totally. We're not – the key to our success on offense is totally balanced. And Saturday what you saw happen was when the scoreboard went sideways – we became very one-dimensional. Yeah. Now, now, if you look at it, we still ran the ball really – I mean, we, we actually ran the ball pretty well when you really look at it. Uh, but some of that, we were getting light boxes because they were anticipating pass, and it made it really hard to throw the ball. If you're in a normal situation on first down and you're able to play pass or, or throw an RPO or do something simple, you're usually in good shape. When you're drop back pass, drop back pass, drop back pass, you're setting yourself up for failure. Us having good – balance within the offense is critical it's also important for our offense and this was what I, the meeting i just came from it's also important for our offense to realize how good our defense is and they're playing good and just because we're struggling if the score like the score against state was three nothing in the second quarter and it felt like we were getting beat 35 nothing and it's like fellas it was three nothing you know all we needed if one guy trips and we hit a go route we're winning you know so it it's 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 awesome to have a good defense. Uh, I thought our defense, they made a couple mistakes this past week, but for the most part they kept us in it. They still created turnovers. If they keep playing like that, then with this offense and, and the people we have, we should have a pretty good team. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, we're really looking forward to the weekend, and uh, I think uh, it, Glenville's a special place, and uh, all these home dates, uh, you know, it's it's for small college football, it's a great atmosphere here. Totally, love it here. And uh, – well, Coach, tell you what, uh, we'll we'll be talking next week a little more at length with the the UC game and on the aftermath of that, and uh, you know we have a big October ahead of us. So this, uh, no matter what happens Saturday, you know it it could certainly be the springboard for some things down the road here. We'll, we're certainly going to uh, prepare like uh, like uh, champions and go out and do our best stuff. Coach, appreciate you joining us Thank here today. You.